located in Government Hill. This is the area where the business that we're going to be interviewing today is called the driver's seat. This is one of their student cars and they learn to drive and they'll tell us a little bit more about all of the different things that they train and do. Amen? So let's just take a scan and we're going to learn about the driver's seat. Well, we're on location today with Let's Talk Real Talk and we're in front of the driver's seat. This is a, a driving school that's located in Government Hill. This is an area located in Anchorage. And this is one of the owners here, Albert, and he's going to introduce himself more and just tell us a little bit about the school, and then we'll go inside and get out of the weather. Amen? So formally introduce yourself, Al. Well, thank you very much, Angela. Yes, my name is Albert Felder. I'm partner up with my uh, partner, Skip Gibson. He was in the state uh, doing driver's education with the U.S. Postal Service been there for over 20 years doing that for the whole state and we partnered up and to bring to this community of Anchorage, Alaska the driver's seat. And what we do here, we do the Class D regular auto uh, driving lessons uh, and, and education and we like to present this to the community of Anchorage, Alaska. Okay, so we're going to go inside and we're going to learn a little bit more of what they have to offer for the community here in Government Hill and the city of Anchorage. Well, actually abroad. Anybody can come over here. Amen? So we're just getting a glimpse right now of the office as you enter the driver's seat. And Mr. Albert Felder, this is his work area, his office here. And this, of course, is the waiting area for the clients that come in. Very beautiful office. Nice Alaskan style. Amen? And so we're going to take a scan, basically, of the classrooms and what they have here. They have computers. They have tables, study tables for their testing. Amen? Amen. You have your signs. And they're just going to tell us a little bit more about that in just a little bit when we get into the interview and all of the services that they offer. Amen? Okay, we've entered into the classroom. We took a view of outside. Mr. Albert was showing us the outside, the signage, so if there are people that are interested, they can come and be a part of his school. Also, we have one of his assistants. If you would introduce yourself and give your full name. Okay. And what are your duties? Well, my name is Dorothea Lathan. I am Albert's assistant, and my duties are to follow his footsteps. Pretty much what he does. Amen. And um, have his back. Amen. Praise so. God. And so, Albert, um, since you're an uh, owner, you have a partner, you said that lives out of state. Can you just get a little bit more into detail? I know you have your manuals here, State of Alaska Driver's Manual. Can you tell us the different uh, programs that you offer and who qualify for the programs? Okay, yes, I can do that. Uh, we deal with, uh, like I mentioned, Class D, and that basically car carries and covers everybody from ages up uh, from 14 all the way up to, you know, where you're able still to, to be behind the wheel uh, proficiently. And um, so 14, uh, they can get their permits from the DNB, and when it comes to getting their uh, driver's license, provisional driver's license, you have to have at least six months and be 16 years old in order to do the road test. And when it comes to the different services that we have, we have road tests, we have, um, uh, when, we, when it comes to helping the student to get their, their permit, we do classroom training for that. We have classroom for an older set, older set of folks. Um, we also have uh, the, the, the slip and slide for winter driving. We also carry for adult driving. We also have also two-point reduction class that we have as well. Uh, so we, we cover the gambit and there's other things that we're looking to, to bring aboard, such as getting familiar with your vehicle, vehicle operation. We're looking at generating a class for, for that as well. Because there's a lot of folks that just don't know how to change a tire, to looking underneath the hood, knowing what's this, that, and the other thing underneath the hood. So there's a lot of other things that we're looking to uh, provide the community. Amen. So, um, in the class, okay, I noticed you said that they can get their provisional uh, driver's permit mm -hmm. at 15. Uh, so, basically, it's the same test that's administered 
um, basically through the state? Through the state, mm -hmm. yes. Um, for the individual looking to be permitted, you have to go to the DMV to do the written test. Mm -hmm. And then once that's done, then you can come to us to do the road test. We are third-party DMV testers under the DMV, mm -hmm. so we can provide that as well as a service. So do you do any particular advertisement to recruit people, or you're online and they just basically look you up, or do you assist your business with any type of advertisement, and mm -hmm. if so, what type? Yeah, well, first of all, we're, we are online as the drivers with an S, seat, mm -hmm. Alaska spelled out. So that's all one word, driver's seat, Alaska at gci.com. And then we can, we can email us at driverseatalaska.net. Um, so, and as when it comes to the aspect of uh, other areas of marketing that we do, we do Good Deal Magazine. We put coupons in that periodically. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to get out in the community. We had something that went, we went uh, and had done there at Cabela's. Uh -huh. And we're looking at other things that we could do to help the city and the community know that we are out here and we want to provide a service for the community. And the, the other aspect of that is that we'll meet any price in town. So mm -hmm. it's almost like, why is there, or would, would you want to go to any other place? Oh, amen. And I notice also it's very good that you have educational things that's part of your training because even with young people, um, such as teenagers, when they get behind the wheel or they use their parents' vehicles and sometimes they want to play like their Speedy Gonzales on the highways and they have accidents or they're trying to text and drive and what have you. Um, what, um, what would you say to students when they're training? Do you give them warnings about all of those things like that? Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, newspaper clipping articles of what can occur or what has occurred in the community. Yes. And the repercussions behind that action of mm -hmm. drivers texting and or calling, talking on the phone while driving. Mm -hmm. It's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have, um, which we will talk about uh, with my partner yes. here with the Drive ID from Cell Control. We, we're the only authorized dealer in the state of Alaska. Uh, but that is a powerful, powerful mm -hmm. device that basically eliminates texting and talking on the phone while driving. Uh, but we do, as a, in the class, we go over those issues, texting and driving. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to stay alert, got to keep your eyes on the road, not be distracted. Yes. So we, we address all those issues and in a very serious note, because it is very serious and people do lose their lives behind the wheel on the roads in the city of Anchorage. Amen. So you had mentioned early, I'm just going to back up just a little bit about you and your partner and what his experience was, and he thought it was a good idea for this area to open up a school. Um, would you say at any point before you agreed, did you pray about it and ask God, uh, would this be a good thing for the community, or just kind of give us a little taste of that journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my partner and I were both Christians. Amen. Uh, we definitely believe Amen. in the things of God, Amen. and uh, we focus our attention on on the Lord. Amen. And um, my partner, like I mentioned, he's twenty plus years mm -hmm. as a instructor yeah. for the state of Alaska for the U.S. Postal Service, and he started this business back in 09, 2009, mm -hmm. and it took a year to get this whole operation going, and then I came on board in 2010. And uh, with my background, retired military, Air National Guard. All right. All right. <laughs> and I thank the Lord for allowing me, you know, from that retirement aspect, yes. giving me the ability to come in with my partner and to really create a wholesome, definitely uh, educational yes. feel to learning how to how to drive safely. Yes. And with my background, because it's, it's all about training in, yes. in the military, it's all about training, and it's all about knowing who you're training and helping them to develop in the best ways that they can. And uh, my partner, he actually is retired as well in the reserves. Mm -hmm. So he, you have two retired individuals uh, in the military of uh, yeah, a world of wealth of information, yes. experience, and know-how to get the job done and as we say, get the mission done, <laughs> getting the mission accomplished. So we are able to do all those things and we do it in, that, in a very much lighthearted, uh, but professional kind of way. Amen. Amen. So I noticed you have a teenage daughter. Has she bugged dad about training her? Well, that's, that's a subject. 
Yeah, because yeah. uh, when it comes to your own children. Well, you know, when you have yeah, children, you I know. every one of them is different. Yes. You have some that's really, you know, hot for what they like to do. And yes. this one, particularly, she's kind of slow. Okay. And she's still seeking to get her permit. Amen. But once she does, what I'm thinking about doing is, you know, giving her something different. Yes. Which, you know, another friend of ours suggested let's exchange daughters from different schools because he, he owns another business in town. Okay. We can exchange daughters and. He does my daughter, I do his daughter in the instructional aspect. Oh, because wow. we're, we both trust one another, and that's yes. a beautiful thing when it comes to professional and education and knowing what you're doing behind the wheel as an, as an instructor. Amen. Yeah, I notice you have pretty um, quite a bit of informational signs so that they're aware <laughs> in the class, so that they can have an idea. There are familiar signs that you see on the highway so that they can pay attention mm -hmm. and be alert. Amen, that's right. Amen, because I knew uh, when I was a teenager, um, I was pretty good, and then it's when I, I started getting more like 18, 19, you know, and we were kind of experimenting, you know, how you go, and uh, people would start driving reckless or what mm -hmm. have you. But I never had a wreck, per mm -hmm. se, myself, and ran into anybody. Well, I take that back. I was about uh, 20. Yeah, and I had an accident. It was uh, due to a storm. It was a bad flash flood, and I totaled out my little Volkswagen, mm -hmm. and uh, I was so crushed because I didn't have a car anymore. And so, uh, yeah, I, but I was warned. I was a little hard-headed. I still <laughs> thought I could drive in the rain, the heavy rains. That that happens with young people sometimes when they don't want to obey. They feel they like, know they can do this. And I was warned, you know, by my grandmother, I don't think you should go anywhere. Uh, that rain is really heavy, and they said there are areas where it's low. So sometimes even children, even on interstates, it's sad when you hear accidents of children, teenagers, uh, because they were feeling rebellious or anything like that. Even my own son at one time, when he was like 18, he, had a, he was hit, but he was warned too. Don't drive the car over there. Mm -hmm. You can walk to the park. But some of his friends encouraged him, let's just drive because they wanted to hear the music. You know, young people think differently. So now, do you offer anything for people that are trying to get their driving record straight? They may have had DWIs or something or have gotten their license revoked in some particular way. Do you offer anything like that? We do. They, they call it that um, two-point reduction. And we also offer the court appointed uh, driving course mm -hmm. when you have to go to court because something occurred while you was driving and the judge orders you to a class. Uh, so we do have that as well. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing like, like what you was talking about with the young people. Yes. You know, it, there's just not enough experience, of mm -hmm. course, when you're first starting out how to drive. Yes. To know that experience carries a humongous amount mm -hmm. of, of ability. Yes. To be able to be safe behind the wheel. Yeah. Uh, and that's where, as a reminder, when it comes to parents, mm -hmm. parents, we need to underst understand that aspect and that yes. you don't, you know, give a key mm -hmm. to a child and say, well, go ahead and go, go, go to town, basically. Yes. Because it's just like taking a loaded gun mm -hmm. and giving a child and next thing you know, they either hurt themselves or hurt other people involved in a auto collision yes. out there on the road. Mm -hmm. And that would be, you know, a traumatic experience not only for the parents but anyone associated with those individuals involved in that collision. So it's, it's and that's where we as a school help them to develop the foundation, mm -hmm. no aspect of safe driving. That's very, very important because it's so much involved when driving, yes. as you come, especially as you come to intersections. 97% of all collisions occur in intersections. Okay, it doesn't matter where it occurs, yes. but we know that 97% of all collisions happen in intersections. And getting the new driver to understand that mm -hmm. the aspect of where are all the potential risks involved as you travel through the intersection. And risk is defined simply as exposure to danger. Amen. You gotta know those points of interest when it comes to potential risk. Mm -hmm. And that's where we help the students to understand as we're traveling with them as an instructor, uh, what, what areas you need to be very conscious of as mm -hmm. you're traveling down the road because, again, it's, a, it's the experience aspect that yes. really helps a driver to be safe behind the wheel. Amen. Well, Mr. L, I thank you for your part of the show and 
Uh, I appreciate your time. I know you're a very busy man. And we're going to talk to your partner and get into some more aspects of the business. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to get into the second aspect, or I should say another part of the aspect of the driving school. And um, you're going to sh share with us a little bit about your part that you handle, along with your other duties. Yes, ma'am. Well, first I'd like to say that, um, you know, God is good. Amen. And I... Um, have been out of work for a while, and I started praying and asking the Lord to give me a job, you know, that was um, flexible enough so I can yeah. help support the family, yes. but also a place that I would fit in. Yes. And so I came here, and um, I have been known Albert for a long time. We did ministry together, you know, yeah. so he's a brother in the Lord. Yes. So back in um, 08, mm -hmm. my mother-in-law was killed by uh, a drunk driver. He was wow. 16 years old. And uh, it was four teenagers in a car. Thank you. And so, you know, ever since that happened, it's like I had this drive and this passion, yes. you know, to um, bring an awareness and to actually don't let her yes. death be in vain. Yes. Even though I know she's with the Lord, you know, because she was an awesome woman. Yes. Um, but that's my drive. Mm -hmm. And my drive is to get the word out mm -hmm. um, about, about distracted driving. Yes. Because not only texting is a distraction, mm -hmm. but also just you know, looking at things, you know, yes. uh, talking on the phone or talking yes. too much to people that are in the car yes. as well. So um, we have this device here called Drive ID. Okay. And so the Drive ID is, I'll get a little technical information That's here. That's fine. Yes. Educate us. Yes. So um, cell control was established in 2009. Mm -hmm. And cell control is the world's leading technology to stop distracted driving for passengers and commercial vehicles. So we also do fleet as well. So what's fleet mean? Fleet means um, a company that has more than one vehicle, okay. uh, like a truck or van or okay. something like that. So you know, numerous okay. uh, vehicles. Uh, cell control's patent mobile device policy enforcement technology has been recognized by the Consumer Electronics Show and the National Traffic Safety Institute and is used by several Fortune 500 companies. And so we are the only ones in the state of Alaska that have this device. And so the goal is that we become the safest state in the union. Well, that's a good thing. It's not impossible. No, it's not. Nothing's too impossible for God. Because um, just as we have the picture up on the wall where it says police driver, uh, the driving and texting, um, there yes. was a young lady called Bayshore. Mm -hmm. She, she uh, was texting and talking on the phone and she hit this young man that was down here going to school to do um, some to technical school. Yes. This happened a couple years ago. Yes. And she thought she hit a dog. But just because the distraction yes. was there, she didn't even see what she hit. Install. <laughs> okay, so um, what is, I know you're probably asking, what is a cell control device? Yes. So the Drive ID is a technical a technology that defends drivers against the distraction of email, texting, calls coming in, mm -hmm. um, anything that your phone can do, mm -hmm. you know, that can distract you. Yes. So here's a device hmm. that's called the cell control, which is a Drive ID. Now, where does this go in your car? It goes right behind your rear mirror. And there's sure. no tools. You don't have to go to a shop. It's easily done. It just with a piece heat, of tape. It just okay. goes and it has to sit like this because you have your USB cord right here. So it'll be sitting like this under your rear mirror. Oh, I got you. And it's also solar powered. So it'll, as long as the sun is shining you know, out and we get a lot of daylight, it'll work really good up here in Alaska. Um, so what about the teenagers when you're going to the movies? It's, it still works. Yeah, well, good. Yeah, we get the sunlight, but in the winter months. In the winter months, I actually installed mine in my car in the winter months. And it, um, it did go down on me because, of, you know, thinking solar power that it's going to last yeah. for a while, right? But then it started getting, you know, dark days. Yes. So what I did was, I, and the reason why you plug it this way, so, you know, have it sitting up this way, so you can plug uh -huh. up your USB port into okay. your cigarette lighter. Okay. So it charged it up, and I haven't had a problem since. Wow, okay, so long as it's charged, you shouldn't have a problem in the winter, like the darker times here in Alaska, or even in the lower 48 when it gets dark. 
Um, if it's charged up, you won't have a problem. And other than that, solar. If that's good. Solar power, yes. You don't have to worry about your electricity or anything like that. And you also get a um, an app on your phone. Mm -hmm. So you download the app on your phone. Now, do you have to have an iPhone? I know some people have different types of phones. No, it goes with any phone. The only okay. thing is, you know, of course, Apple, everybody knows that have Apple or have yes. Apple for a long time. Yes. They have certain restrictions. Uh -huh. So there are a few technical things that they're working on to update the Apple phone. I see. But pretty much it works good. Mm -hmm. So what you will get is, like, um, for instance, when mine went down, mm -hmm. you get a message on your phone, but mine wasn't fully set up. Uh -huh. And so I didn't get that message. But now I get messages telling me I need to charge my phone if I need to or what's going on with it. I see. You have to excuse my voice. So now does it retreat? Uh, so you can continue to drive and then when you get to your destination then you check your messages kind of like when you check your um, phone yes ma'am what happens is um, so it's just like a silencer or something like that no you still hear the beeps or, you, know, you still hear if somebody's calling you mm -hmm. if somebody's texting you it'll mm -hmm. still alarm you that it'll you know vibrate or whatever you have your phone mm -hmm. on it'll do that and so what it does is it collects that information and it leaves it just like it would in the email or texting. But then when you stop, it'll give you, like for me, I can check my phone while I'm at the red light. Yeah. And I can see if it's an emergency call or something like that. It'll, you put in a, um, a user's code, you know, okay. so you can override. So there's an override that you can do. Uh -huh. um, so the parents can always check with their kids and find out what's going on. Yeah. And they have like a whitelist. <laughs> Yeah. And so the whitelist, the parents will be added on the whitelist or, you know, their job or anything like that so they can answer the phone at that time. Mm -hmm. But the um, device, once you load it up on your home PC, mm -hmm. then you download the app on your phone. Okay. And as you can see here, we have, um, yeah. we have a uh, score for your phone, uh -huh. we have a driving score, mm -hmm. you have your miles driven, mm -hmm. you have your time spent driving, and then you have your total points. Mm -hmm. And so people would ask, okay, what are the points for? The points are a reward that you can give to whoever this is uh -huh. on. So like you have this for a fleet, you can um, give a reward yeah, for, what it looks like. yeah. you, you can give a reward for your employees um, if they're doing good for, say, the month, give them a bonus, $50 yeah. or, you know, something. Yeah. And then also you can look at your trips. So you can pick on my trip activity mm -hmm. and it tells you where I started and where I stopped. And it lets you know exactly if I talked, you know, zero seconds, um, phone time usage, driving score. This will also let you know if a person is accelerating too much, um, oh, speed, hard like speeding around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's really good for fleet too because um, you know people pay a lot of companies pay a lot of money for their vehicles, and if there's somebody out there that's really just mistreating yeah. their vehicle, they can yeah. stop to it. Uh huh. Like when you rent a car as well and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that's that. But I kind of want to go over um, how it actually works, just a little bit more information. Okay, so um, I'm just going to read a little bit what they have as far as how it really works. Okay. Let's see. Cell control, uh, activation, and configuration of mobile device protection setting just takes a few minutes, like as we talked about, mm -hmm. to download. And so what it does is it's um, a safe mode. And the safe mode is like a red zone for the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. Whoever's in the driver's seat. Or a parent can actually shut the whole car down where nobody's phone would work. Yeah. You know how some kids are like, even though the person's driving and they're right. staying focused, <laughs> right. that person in the back can say, look, look. Because my granddaughters do it to me all the time. I said, I can't look, I'm, I'm driving, you know? Yes. So, um, <laughs> Having said that, the phones could be shut down, so that's less distraction. Uh -huh. So if we had had this available when my mother-in-law was killed, yeah, it probably would have, you know, alerted the kids. Even though it doesn't do um, so much for a person just bending down, because that's what the, the teenager was doing, bending down yes. and getting cut. Yes. But to me, distracted driving is distracted driving. Yes. You know, whether you're drinking and driving, you're texting and driving, you're, you know, yes. you're talking to your friends. The road is very important. Yes to be on every uh, couple of seconds somebody's yes. getting killed or yes. getting in an accident for that. And usually it's from some type of distraction, just a few seconds and then it's quick. Exactly. Yeah, you know, you're in an accident. Mm -hmm. I've been in some accidents myself. Um, I always got hit. I never hit anybody. <laughs> so thank God I'm still yes, alive. I'm not right. broken anywhere. Mm -hmm. I, you know, but I know people 
people that have suffered uh, from accidents and people felt very guilty because they, you know, I could have waited. I could have, you know, especially when it affects someone's life. Um, their life has been changed forever. They exactly. may have a wheelchair, or they may have been broken up, have screws uh, in their legs, uh, lost legs, all kinds of things. Cars catching on fire after they have mm -hmm. had impact. So um, I've met different people that have suffered and some of it was their doing, but most of it, it was because someone hit them. Or Correct. sometimes they couldn't avoid the traffic when they saw the wreck ahead, and they were looking off, and by the time they got up, because it was already someone crashing into someone else, and then it becomes a traffic jam. We know in the lower 48, we have bigger traffic jams oh, yes. because of the line, the, the lanes, that people drive five lanes, and things like that one way and on the other side and they have those crash ups and a lot of times it's so many cars or vehicles it could be trucks rigs all types of things they just crash all up on the interstate and bottleneck it mm -hmm. you know and it was just like one person yes that's all yeah. it takes and that's the reactions from the other people that like you said might have been trying to look back and check on their child or might have been trying to get a quick call, say I'm just gonna answer it, or mm -hmm. just look at it really fast, or, you know, um, yeah, it's very important. Okay, carry on. Well, I um, have some statistics that I like to go over, because we kind of yes. just basically touched about the drive ID, yes. the cell control, which you can get here. Yes. Um, and it's only one fee. Mm -hmm. I just wanna add that it's only one fee, it's 129. Mm -hmm. And that takes care of everything. You don't have a monthly fee. Um, there's no extra charge for anything. And you can set it up how you want to. Mm -hmm. So just uh, about texting, one text or call could wreck it all yeah. is the thing. And it says it's distracted driving is a dangerous epidemic on America's roadways. Mm -hmm. In 2009 alone, nearly 5,500 people were killed and 400,000 were more injured in distracted driving crashes. Mm -hmm. So you are 23 yeah times more likely to crash if you are texting while you're driving mm -hmm. so the state of alaska um, i did a research and the state of alaska has the highest wow the highest not wrecks but they have the highest class a misdemeanor the fine is up to ten thousand dollars in one year imprisonment wow and knowing that you know we, we have small highways like you just said yes. but if you go to california they only charge you twenty dollars yeah. the fine is only twenty dollars that that goes to show how they value the lives of the people there that live in that state yeah I'm here. <laughs> and so uh, if you injure someone it's a class c felon mm -hmm. so just think just texting and driving only is a class a and you get up to a ten thousand dollar fine in one year imprisonment mm -hmm. If you injure someone, Class C felony, up to 50000 and five years in prison. Mm -hmm. This is for the state of Alaska. Seriously injure someone, it's a Class B felony, wow. and it's up to $100,000 and 10 years in mm -hmm. prison. If you kill someone, it's a Class A, wow. up to 250000 and 20 years in prison. Mm -hmm. So it's not something to take lightly. Yeah. You know, and like I said, my passion is I'm working on trying to uh, really impose this. Yes. You know, I got to go out and get like seven thousand, almost eight thousand signatures, mm -hmm. and I want to call it Effie's Law. Mm. That's my mother-in-law's name. Wow. This is a picture I keep on my desk. Mm -hmm. It's a picture of her. Wow. So you know. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to catch that, but <laughs> she was sitting on Santa Claus' lap. Amen. But she was a very blessing to to the community. She um, was a coach. Wow. Uh, principal at Clark wow. um, and different schools in the, in the area mm -hmm. and um, they were homesteaders um, my in-laws wow were. so what year did they come here in 50 I want to say 52 maybe 53 wow. something like that yeah they were here a long time yeah we still have the original post office box that they had when they got up here oh so you wind up getting their home after not the home but the post office box at the post wow. office wow yes so numbers and codes didn't change, it didn't affect you. You know no. how the communities grow sometimes mm -hmm. and they'll redo the addresses and the numbers because of the population. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just kept it just to keep the family going. I gotcha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I wanna read a few things out of the Alaska Dispatch News as of March 7th. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a year ago. Mm -hmm. It says that um, 
The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration research confirmed that we have observed 11% of drivers at any one time during day, daylight hours are using their cell phones. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite sure it's gone up because it's been a year ago. <laughs> so you figure that the uh, estimate, they estimate at least 28% of all traffic crashes or at least 1.6 million crashes each year involve drivers using their cell phones. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And then it talks about what the... Um, so we're saying since the cell phone has gotten popular, we have more accidents. Exactly. More so, it's not as high as the DUIs because it says while DUI deaths for uh, 2010 were 1,100 individuals, those numbers are going down. Mm -hmm. And the cell texting and driving is going up. I see. So it's a very, it's a serious epidemic that's going out there mm -hmm. in the community mm -hmm. across the world. Yeah. So that's why my goal is to really push that we become the safest state in the union. Yeah. Because it's very important. That's why, you know, the, the drive ID and the school go hand in hand. Yes. Because we're able to talk to the kids about texting and driving. We have pictures posted on the wall, newspaper clippings about texting and driving. This girl's life has been messed up yes. because she wanted to text yes. somebody. Yes. And we all know somebody who's texting and talking mm -hmm. while they're driving. Yeah. <laughs> I've been guilty a little bit. Yes, <laughs> I have too. I turn away take to a red light. <laughs> I have two of this device being in my so car. sit at the red light <laughs> by the road. And that's n not so good either, but at least you're sitting still. Yes, <laughs> you are. And like I said, I can check my phone. This allows me to check my phone while I'm at the red light. It gives me like a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. So I'll look through and I'll say, okay, do I need to pull over and um, check my phone and make the phone call? And that's what I'll do. So it's actually stopped so me. So it's like a, it, okay, we know our phone. Um, Numbers come up, texts come up, emails come up. Mm -hmm. So you're driving. Okay, our phone saves it as well. So how does this work hand in hand with your phone? I'm still kind of through a the bit. app. Through the app. So okay, so you download the information. You you know get logged in mm -hmm. on the computer. You have mm -hmm. to do it on a PC. Mm -hmm. And so you do it on there, and then you set up everything. Mm -hmm. Then you download the app on your phone. Mm -hmm. So they go hand in hand together so when yeah. you have the um, you get a report and so you block it out so like say for instance I'm the only one pretty much in my car mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. you know when I go pick up my grandkids or something but so does it speak to you or anything or alert you just through the, just through the app oh yeah but with the app does like if the if a car is almost getting too close does it say watch out kind of like Siri no it doesn't, something like it that, doesn't do that. you were saying about uh, the young person had leaned over and would have had this. So what does it do to, uh, I guess, prevent an accident? Well, it shuts your phone down. In regards to the, um, the comment that I made about the young man, mm -hmm. this would have been like some technology that was more mm -hmm. advanced when he bent down and he went out of the driving area, mm -hmm. you know, could alert. This doesn't do that. Oh, it doesn't? It doesn't alert. No. Okay, but, that's what I was thinking maybe it had some type of alert to it. No, well. but it would have been nice. Oh, okay. You know, but this is just for your phone if you're texting while you're driving. Mm -hmm. So it'll shut your phone down. So you can't even use oh, your so phone. Oh, so it's really like a lockbox. Pretty much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Pretty much. It locks your phone down. And like I said, you know, mine is set up for like almost a minute and a half. And I'm at a red light when I stop mm -hmm. or something. And as soon as I accelerate, it'll shut my phone down. I see. I see. Um, so I just encourage all parents to talk to their kids and don't let them get behind the wheel, not unless they get the drive ID <laughs> at 849 East Loop Road. They're only 129. Um, so in 2012, uh, 3,328 people were killed in crashes involving distracted driving alone. And this is basically... Um, it's constantly going up. Mm -hmm. In addition, 421,000 people were injured in motor vehicle crashes involving distracted driving. Wow. So you figure every year that more and more people have cell phones because we have more and more teenagers yes. that are out on the road driving. Yes. Um, not to say that they're irresponsible, but they're making irresponsible decisions yes. as they text and drive while they're on the road. Yes. Or, you know, um, being distracted. 
So this could make a good graduation present for some people that are graduating too, huh? Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to buy two, one for my cousin and one for my niece. So, and they're graduating this year, but they're pretty safe drivers, but still, anything yeah. can happen. You know, so that's an extra measure to keep them safe. And, it, and they don't have to really worry about turning it on because the app is on their phone. Constantly. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, the app doesn't never shut down. Mm -hmm. It's just when these two meet, they activate. Mm -hmm. The phone and the device in the car, and it's, it's on all the time. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't activate or uh, shut your phone down until you're near the box, mm -hmm. you know, in that car. Somebody asked me, can you take it out and put it in another car? One of the mothers that came to our school, mm -hmm. she was like, my son, my son has just really been on me about getting him to come to the school. They live in a the neighborhood. Uh -huh. And so, um, she says, I just love my son so much, I don't want anything to happen to him. <laughs> so I said, I got something for you. And then I told him, I said, you know, to give your mother that extra assurance, how about you pay for this, you yeah. know, out of your allowance or something. He said, okay, yeah. I can do that. So she says, can it follow wherever you go? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I can't follow you wherever you go, but, you know, you could probably just um, get your friends to get it. You well, know? Siri, if they have certain iPhones and you put the app, they can tell where you're going and where you've mm -hmm. been and all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's what that does. It gives you a map of where the person is going, the trip for the day. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very important. So she was happy. She wanted to pay for him to go to school and she bought him one of those. Yes. And so I asked him, um, and I, I called him up and asked him, did he talk to his friends? He said, they're not too happy. They don't want their mom to know oh, about it. Yeah. I would imagine. <laughs> So, having said that, um, talking on a cell phone while driving, 69% of drivers in the U.S. ages 18 and 64 report that they have talked on their cell phones while driving in the 30 days before they were, the survey was done. Mm -hmm. So, just think about the, those numbers alone, 64%. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, 69%. Mm -hmm. How many accidents occurred? Wow. That's pretty high at 69%. So, we, because we deal with a younger generation um, getting their driver's license sort of here at yes. our school, they're very inexperienced drivers. So this will help them stay there, on, you know, while they're driving. It'll yeah. help them be non-distracted. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because the numbers show that when there's more people in the car, mm -hmm. there's causes for more distraction. Yeah, that's very true. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a teenager. They didn't even really enforce the seatbelts back then. You could be all piled up in a car. That's true. <laughs> I'm so glad. I remember I was in an accident uh, with some cousins of mine. We were all scrambled up like eggs. The car turned over. I wasn't driving. I was a passenger. And when we came out, I thought the car was going to explode. I was beating the glass with my head. It was already shattered. And certain ones, we weren't like seriously hurt. But there were two people that had really got some really bad cuts and lost a lot of blood. But uh, it shook me up. Mm -hmm. And but then you know you go and you, you you go for a while and you're doing good. Then you find yourself with some cousins or friends and you do something else stupid when you're a teenager. That's true. So I was about 19 this time, and we call ourselves while well, I was in college, of course. And we had traveled at least about three. And now, if my grandmother, my grandmother raised me and my grandmother, if they would have known, even though you're in college, they still, you know, when you first leave home, they're a little mm -hmm. protective. Of course. They would have known we had drove four hours away. No, it was three hours away. Three hours away just to see, you know, like the DJs were big in the days, DJ wars, DJs and mm -hmm. things. And we came back. It was like four in the morning driving. We were so sleepy. And my cousin had driven off the highway. All of us had went to sleep at the same time, apparently. Oh and I knew it was prayers that kept us. That's right. We went off the interstate. And I was hearing like rocks or something hitting under the car. And I woke up. All of us started waking up at the same time. And God just shifted that car back up on the interstate. Oh and we kept going. That's we blessing. rolled the windows down. We were not going to sleep. We were looking at the mileage, how many miles before we got to our city. Mm -hmm. And then we got to our city. We were so sleepy. We were trying to see if we had enough money just to pull over and go in a cheap hotel. And we just crashed for the rest of the day. But we managed to make it home, drop off, make it home. We were so tired because... 
you know, that was dangerous too. Very. And you know, our lives could have been just like that. Mm -hmm. Just flash while we're asleep, just died in our sleep. God is so good. He is, he is. He's so good. <laughs> He's so good. And sleep is a distraction. Yes. Yes. Because when you get dry, I, I, yeah, I've been guilty at some point in my life. We were traveling mm -hmm. at different times. And I would just start, I started getting heavy. And the next thing you know, you're weaving on the lines. Like, it's time to pull over and get some sleep in a rest area or something. But, yeah, even with adults, you know, some adults can be distracting too, mm -hmm. even though they're more experienced. Sometimes they can make unwise decisions exactly. as well, like changing lanes at the wrong time or trying to speed up and could be playing with their phone too at the same time because I've been around people in the highways just here in Anchorage driving crazy, hot dogging it, and they were adults. Exactly. I may have had a bad day at work and they're just stressing out and they're texting somebody or on the phone they have it actually phone. on their ear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of the earpiece, they had it actually on their ear. Yes. You know? I experienced that yesterday driving. Yeah. Of course, somebody was just like ramming up, like right up on me just because yeah. he wants to get over. And I looked and he was on his phone. Yeah. You know, so. Um, <clears throat> and the phones are a good out. thing, but then they also can be a hazard if you don't think. Mm -hmm. Because it could be your life or someone else's life. That's true. That's at stake. Or both. Yes, yes. So, once yeah. again, having the self-control and the drive ID mm -hmm. is powered by the self-control. Um, my motto is, here at the driver's seat, Yes. give your loved ones a co-pilot for life. Mm -hmm. So, if you care you know, enough to put your child behind the wheel, give them their co-pilot that will go with them yes. when they're in the car. So, it's very important. Yeah, well, as we're wrapping it up on this session, I just would like um, my guest to maybe say some words of encouragement to maybe some s students or young adults that may be driving. I know in some bigger cities like New York and uh, some places like LA, some of them they do a lot of public transportation. They don't even drive because of the congestion of the traffic. But um, we're kind of focusing a little bit on the youth too right now because of this device. Uh, could you say some words of encouragement to the audience and, uh, you know, as far as uh, encouraging them to do the right thing and pray for the safety of those that may be out there driving and they're reckless? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, one thing I just want to encourage teenagers. You have to be a leader. In order to be a leader, is to stand outside the box, not be yes. in the box, and don't be a follower, because um, life matters. Yes. And if we don't care about life, being behind the wheel as an individual, we won't get anywhere but to see more and more depths. Yes. Across our state. So my mission is here at the driver's seat. We're here to um, supply you with the drive ID to help you stay focused on the road and have less distraction. Because there will always be some distraction out there. You know, women putting on their makeup, combing their hair, you know, yes. or something. There's always distraction around us. But the numbers are going up because of cell phones. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cell phones are used in 12% of crashes. And the numbers are kind of, they're just climbing the walls. So having said that, I would like to encourage you young teenagers, young adults that are coming out into the uh, community driving here in Alaska, to let's push forward and move forward on this push to be the safest state in the union. So I just want to thank you for your time. Um, Angela, thanks for coming here. Yes. And I want to say uh, that God is a good God. Yes. And that I thank him that he blesses everyone that sees this. Yes. And that you're on fire to come down to 849 East Sloop Road mm -hmm. at the driver's seat mm -hmm. to get the drive ID. And um, I just want to pray over the state of Alaska yes. that more than just us at the driver's seat and Angela sees the vision and sees that we need to work hard to become the safest state in the union. And Father, we just thank you right now for this TV show. We thank you that the word is getting out throughout the community. And we thank you for the ones that are texting and driving that they get convicted yes. to stop driving and texting at the same time. Even having a conversation, you know, people get upset and they, they lose focus on what yes. they're doing and that can cause an accident. So my, like I said, my mother-in-law, Effie Lathan, was killed. Yes. She was on her way to church. It was New Year's Eve night. 
and um, her neck snapped, you know, like like that. And it was four six four teenagers in the car, and nothing happened to him. You know, basically, I mean, like the law here, he probably would have got a ten thousand dollar fine, maybe a year. No, well, probably twenty years in jail because he killed her. Yes. So having said that, you know, our heart is released. We uh, bless this young man, you know, we don't have any bitterness because we know who she was in God. Yes. And so we know that she's dancing before him. But a lot of people are lost out there. They don't know where they're going. Yes. So let's help the highways that we live in be safe. Yes. And as you get in your car, you know, just ask the Lord to guide you and, and put that on your conscience that you are not texting and driving. Amen. So we thank you for that. Amen. In Jesus. Well, thank you for another segment uh, on location with Let's Talk Real Talk. The show is designed, we do a variety of different talk shows. Uh, it's not just concentrated on one particular area, but it's also a show of awareness. It's also a show, of show that displays the various gifts that people have um, and just concerns and topics. So we just want to thank you for joining us again on another segment of Let's Talk Real Talk. And you consider to friend us on Facebook and even maybe subscribe to our YouTube channel. So that way you can get all of the upcoming shows and they'll pop up on your email and you can watch them at any convenience that fits your schedule because they never go off. And um, at the end, you can look at our website and go to our website and just read a little bit about us and um, just partner with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can we sing? Great.